you know, when, when they pitch stuff like, we need to raise the minimum wage, the bigger companies love it when you do that. Hey guys, it's Nas here. I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast with Patrick but David. This was from August 2023, and Patrick had some really interesting points about minimum wage. So let's listen and I'll share my thoughts. We got to recognize who the heroes are. We got to address the drug issue that we're having with the borders. We got to kind of see what's going on with these monopolies that no one's looking at. Like, no one's looking at this stuff. And, you know, what is in a monopoly? Are we really enforcing our monopoly law? Yeah, I don't know if we are. There's a reason why we have the monopoly law, so the big guy cannot bully the other guy, right? Right. You know, when, when they pitch stuff like, we need to raise the minimum wage, the bigger companies love it when you do that. Trust me, the big companies love it when they raise minimum wage. Amazon loves it. Walmart loves it when you raise minimum wage. Keep saying raise minimum wage. They don't have a prime going from 13 bucks to 15 bucks to 20 bucks. They, they could care less if you keep doing that because they're going to raise their margins by 20% or whatever it is and make the money back on the back end. They're not dumb. And you're still going to buy it. We're still going to buy it. We don't have a choice. But it's going to put that guy across the street out of business. So the more small businesses go out of business and fewer small businesses we have, the more these big companies are controlling us. Like, you know, the yeah, he's, you know, he's absolutely right. Um, I, I think he also kind of missed uh, talking about how this actually adds to inflation, but maybe he, uh, you know, he kind of said it in a very you know, fast way. Uh, like the big companies will raise their margins and they'll make it back. Uh, but to explain that further, uh, what any time when you know, government or an outside entity other than the market itself raises wages, you know, like controls uh, uh, wages or has a mechanism of artificial price control, that's basically adding to inflation. So, you know, the cost of living, you're, all you're doing is just raising it. So like Patrick said, those companies will make their money back, but they'll raise the prices for all their goods and they'll have sort of like a butterfly effect, right? If, um, you know, the cost of, you know, food or what have you goes up, then the cost of the transportation for those food is gonna go up. The cost of, you know, everything else is gonna uh, basically follow. So, you know, what minimum wages does is also sort of, um, sort of a price out the the person without any experience so the the person or the people that were going after the minimum wage jobs you know uh if you just graduated high school you just immigrated to uh you know the u.s and you don't really uh know english or have you know the the experience or skill set for a particular position then you know you may go for those positions and you're willing to work for, you know, for the experience, but you're willing to start at, at a, a certain point, which is dictated, you know, should be dictated by the the business owner, well, and the market, right? Uh, if the business owner feels that a particular job is worth this much, that's the price, and you know, someone who um, is taking that, that they're taking that voluntarily, right? So. You know that price if is controlled by an outside force then that person who's you know the owner is like okay that's gonna you know eat into my profits so i'm just gonna raise the cost or everything but not just that that person may you know only hire maybe that person would have hired two people but now they're like okay i'm gonna pay uh you know for this job I'm forced to pay $15 an hour. Well, I'm just going to hire one person and demand that they have or require that they have X amount of skills. So it's really hurting the person that's, you know, that has no skills and are, you know, basically trying to get started. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much the point. But let's uh, see what else he says. This whole thing with banks going out of business and Chase bought a couple of them and these guys bought a couple of them. This is helping the bigger guys. Jamie Dimon sitting there saying, "Oh, you know what? Let's keep raising, and we have to do the responsible thing because the bigger guys get to buy the small community banks or the regional banks. 
this favors them. So this concept about, you know, the bigger guys don't want to raise the minimum wage, it's the small business owner that doesn't want to raise the minimum wage. That's the guy in Kansas who cannot afford it. Mm-hmm. So y- you need to leave that guy alone and you need to control New York. Like making 15 bucks in New York, dude, you don't have a life. So I understand New York's minimum wage has got to be different. But New York's minimum wage has got nothing to do with Kansas. It's got nothing to do with Oklahoma. It's got nothing to do with North Dakota. Right? It's got nothing to do with some of these places that can't afford to have a number like that happen. But the Walmarts, the Amazons, the bigger guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Bernie Sanders? You make a lot of sense. We're going to do the noble thing. And moving forward, Amazon, we're going to put our minimum wage at 15 bucks. That guy's working at Joey's liquor store or Joey's market across the street that's been there for 72 years, passed down in three generations. He goes to Joey and says, hey, listen, bro, I know you're Joey the third. I got to go work at Amazon. They're offering 15 bucks an hour, and I'm only 18 years old. I'm only 19 years old because you're only offering me 1220. Now that guy's going to say, okay, I'll go to 15 bucks as well. Totally get it, but that guy gives a richer benefit. Now he has to raise the prices. Now families go to Amazon. Mm-hmm. So yeah. capitalism, if we eliminate a lot of these small business owners, man, it's a very problematic issue. They get to raise the prices whatever they want to raise it to. Well, we saw a lot of that during COVID, right? I mean, that's what benefited people. And also, I feel like uh, this actually creates monopolies rather than, you know, fight monopolies, right? So as Patrick said, the big businesses love love it when you, you know, raise minimum wages, but it's not just wages. It's also like regulations and things like that. You know, the big businesses, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, or Meta now, um, you know, Amazon, you know, it, it's hard for someone who's just kind of getting started, right? Um, because, you know, an entrepreneur and wants to get into those spaces, you're not going to be just able to get into those spaces and compete with them, right? Because of the regulations and because of the minimum wage and all that. Um, even if you have a really good idea, the these big companies sort of have a monopoly on, you know, or they have this barrier that you really need to be well connected or jump through so many different hoops just to like get in. Uh, and that's what that does. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, these big businesses shutting down the small business, yeah, because the small business is not going to be able to compete with them. And that, that's how you basically end up with monopolies. You know, the best, the solution is, you know, is a, a, a real free market. It's the real, real capitalist or real capitalism, uh, you know, system, which allows for the market to dictate you know, prices and uh, what the cost is and uh, and offer real competition. Because if there's no entity that does, uh, that basically controls these things, so like the government or, uh, you know, another uh, entity, these companies are forced to compete, right? So for example, if you had company A and company B, let's say, uh, they're in a completely free market. They have some of the some similar, you know, service or good, and and they're competing. So in order to in order to always compete and stay in the market, you not only have to attract customers to your goods and services, but as soon as you cut corners, you know, and the customers find out, your business will go out of business. You you know, you're gonna fail. Um, but same thing with if they're hiring uh you know workers right they have to attract and compete for those workers so if company a pays five dollars an hour the way company b can compete is uh by you know uh, offering a higher wage and it's also going to be voluntary you know for the people that take the job some may want to work for a little less but maybe the conditions are better or you know, maybe something is better. Uh, and the businesses are always going to compete in that sense, right? So that's how you create competition. But as soon as, you know, a third party comes along and decides, okay, you're going to pay this much based on, you know, whatever they base it on, based on the inflation index or something like that, uh, then you're, they're not, they can't, they don't understand the value of the services that, 
you know, the businesses are providing. So they're sort of artificially, you know, price controlling. And, you know, when you do that, that's when everything gets messed up. So, but yeah, I, I think that's pretty much what Patrick, B, but David uh, touched on. People during the lockdowns, who benefited? The large businesses. Mm -hmm. Large businesses that were labeled as essential, while small small businesses were forced to stay shut, which was wild. How many restaurants shut down? It was in Los Angeles at one point in time, it was more than 70%. Think about most restaurants have a story. Like, you know, you go to a restaurant, you know, you're like, so how'd you guys start this place? Right. How many of these guys do you have? Oh, we have three of them. How did it get started? Mm -hmm. Guy named, you know, Louis started it 48 years ago and his son did this and now his, you know, grandson is running it. Mm -hmm. That's freaking awesome. It's the yeah. American dream, bro. It's awesome. Yeah. Son is not making 200 grand a year and he's doing okay for himself and restaurant is his. Boom. 48 years. Gone. gone. The average person is like, yeah, it's just a restaurant. You it's not a big deal. That family's legacy, that dad busted his ass in the 60s or the 70s to pass this down to his son and his grandson, that guy's dream is done. You know how we go to funerals and you're sitting there saying, oh, man, that guy's crying pretty bad. You know, he lost his mom, man. I don't want to go through this. One day he's going, oh, look at that guy. He lost his wife or he did this. You cry, right? It is just as emotional to me when a small business that's ran by a regular family, they've kept it in. They've made their own money. They didn't rely on the government. They didn't ask for handouts. They busted their asses. Restaurant is a tough business. You lost your business. That's a funeral. That's a lot of funerals that we had. All those stories, all the going to bed, you're laying next to your wife, and you're saying, babe, you know what I'm watching about Gary? What, babe? I think he's going to run the restaurant one day. And wife says, babe, I feel it as well. I'm so happy. It's going to be so great. That's Gary. That's the father and the mother's dream that put so much time into it. I, in, in our community, there's a family. They bought three houses, right? And a mom and dad started this medical company, and they grew it. They got 7,000 employees today. And now both sons are living next to them. Each son has four kids. And you go into their house. Tradition, here's what we do Tuesdays, Mondays, da-da-da-da-da. What a great story. I look at the mom and dad, and you see mom and dad, the founders are always a little bit rougher because they're the ones that pay the price. You can always feel, you know, there's a certain dynamic to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, um, you know, to me, a Trump candidate, uh, I, I really... Okay, I think that was the end of, end of that. But, but yeah, uh, you know, I think minimum wage laws in general don't actually help the people that, you know, it's supposed to help. I think politicians just use that as as sort of like a carrot and uh you know every few years a politician's like they want to raise the minimum wage but it actually doesn't help anything um you know it you know adds to inflation it makes you know it, it makes everyone poorer so like if uh sir like if you think about how many people actually get paid minimum wage it's a very very tiny tiny number but because of that tiny portion you're you're basically increasing the price of goods and services for everyone so you're actually making everyone poorer so it's you know de your your dollar is becoming is be being devalued um and that's also because of inflation and money printing but that's a different you know issue but yeah a minimum wages wage does not really help um I've gone into into this, uh, you know, many years ago. Uh, my friend is, is the one who sort of, you know, talked, uh, sort of convinced me. Uh, and then after that, I read uh, Milton Friedman, uh, Thomas Sowell, uh, Murray Rothbard, uh, Ludwig von Mises, uh, you know, like all these great uh, thinkers and uh, economists. Uh, they basically pointed out the same same flaw that minimum wage, you know, is. wage, when the government decides on what wage is, that's when there's issues. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in learning about this, I, I would suggest uh, reading any of those, uh, you know, uh, economists. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely Murray Rothbard, Thomas Sowell, and Milton Friedman. I think they, you know, really break down 
uh, minimum wage. Also, Tom Woods, he's good on that as well. Um, yeah, definitely check those books out if you haven't, uh, or, you know, those uh, economists out. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was very interesting. I love uh, these type of conversations and things that make you think and, you know, it impacts your everyday life. And I feel like um, is really good. So I think that's one of the positives of Joe Rogan. Uh, when, you know, he has good guests on and he actual, you know, he has actual conversations about real things and yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, so that, those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. And, uh, you know, if you found this interesting, leave a comment, uh, leave a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.